Hi guys, this is Jenny Lyles. Welcome to Out of My Mind. Today we are going to talk about the four F's of fear. Um, you've probably seen this formulation before if you've been in therapy, if you studied psychology. It's a pretty common way to categorize the different ways in which people experience fear. And while I'm doing this today, I am going to be just drawing the grid lines for my May bullet journal. So it's not going to be fancy or pretty today, but I cheated and beforehand, uh, it might be hard to see with the camera, I've got little pencil and pen marks and I'm just using this as a straight edge to create lines. Now I'm going to talk as though fear is a tiger in the tent of a human being who has nothing but their wits and whatever they can find in the tent to save them from the tiger. Because that's kind of what fear is. We stop working on what's going to be next week's dinner and we start working on how do we survive having a, having a tiger in our tent. Um, one of my fear responses, I'm kind of half joking here, is stuttering. So sometimes when I'm doing this, I stutter and that's just something you're going to have to deal with. Um, anyway. So going on to the four ways we deal with fear. The first is fight. We know what that is. Um, then we have flight, which is running away. We have freeze, which is hiding or being unable to move. And we have fawning, which people are often not as familiar with, which means that we are going to try to uh, make the object of our fear not want to hurt us. So with fight, we're going to, in that tent we talked about, we are going to grab the nearest weapon-like object and attack the target, or the tiger, or yell at him, or somehow try to frighten him out of the tent. With flight, we are going to run away, run away, run away, run away as fast as we can from Mr. Tiger. With freeze, we are going to be a bunny rabbit, not a jackrabbit, and we are going to find a burrow to hide in. I don't know where that would be in a tiny little tent with a dragon, but it wouldn't, dragon, ha, huh? tiger. But in either case, it would be someplace that we think we might be safe. The final one, fawn, here's a really good illustration of it. It goes like this. Hey, Mr. Tiger, if you don't kill me, I'll bring you meat every day for the rest of your life. How's that for a deal? It's probably how our primitive ancestors uh, adopted dogs, by the way. Um, but fawning is trying to meet the needs of whatever is making us afraid. When usually in this case, it's going to be interpersonal fear, fear of other people. And thereby be so valuable that we won't get eaten. Of course, that probably doesn't work so well with tigers, although it might work if we happen to have a slab of meat in the room. Okay, now because I had to take off my glasses to do this because my prescriptions are old, I'm going to show you my page. Here we go, and I'm going to move it up a little bit. In any anxiety diagnosis, your fear is going to be whatever you're anxious about. And you're going to find that you have a couple of favorites. Let's go through them one more time so that you have an idea of what we're talking about. I'm gonna to switch to the next page here. And I really wish I could find a better uh, straight edge, but unfortunately my ruler, ruler seems to have gone walkabout like my dog Lady did last night and she ran and found garbage and now we're giving her a bath today. Anyway, fight is when you roar at the lion, right? Or the tiger or the bear or apparently the dragon. Apparently I've been watching too much Game of Thrones. So you're going to fight back with words. You're gonna fight back with your fists. You're gonna fight back with whatever object you find able to fight back with, right? That is how you're going to fight 
as a fear reaction. You're not always going to make a good fight here. It's not always a great choice to fight, but that doesn't matter because you're not thinking about next week's lunch. You're thinking about surviving the tiger in the tent. Um, some of the things that you might have is sudden rage. You might have uh, a serious chance. And this is actually, folks, I'm going to... People who are fighters as their first fear response, and by the way, guys, I'm one, have to be really, really careful that they don't become whatever it is they're afraid of. You don't want to become the tiger. You don't want to become the fearsome thing that everybody is afraid of. And when you're a fighter by nature, this one might work better. When you're a fighter by nature, you might find that you are yelling and being the threat that you were afraid of in the first place. In which case, you might want to work on that a little bit. As you can see, I went over in a couple spots. That's what whiteout is for. And we're going to keep going. Now, with freeze, and this is... Uh, no, I'm sorry. We'll go to flight. Sorry. With flight, this is pretty obvious. Run away! Run away! Monty Python says run away. Leave a relationship. Leave a job. Leave a... a an opportunity, leave a school, um, even dis dissociation in trauma is kind of a sort of leaving. You're kind of leaving your brain behind and going someplace else. And those of you who have ever dissociated, you'll know what I'm talking about. It kind of feels like you're just not there anymore. Um, you can sometimes run by trying new things over and over and over again and then giving up when it gets hard because the fear comes back. That's again, we're concentrating on the tiger on the cage. We are not concentrating on next week's lunch, which is a problem. So freezing, you can't see me, you can't see me. Can you picture yourself as a little three-year-old child in that tent with that tiger thinking that you're safe because you've put your hands over your eyes? That's kind of what freeze is like. It's not really effective. It can be effective in certain circumstances. I mean, after all, we are overrun with little bunny rabbits all over the world. Ask Australia. They can tell you in really gory detail. Although I think some of them are jackrabbits. Um, but you want to get stuck when you freeze. You get stuck in relationships. You get stuck in jobs you don't like. You get stuck in... Doing, doing tasks that are scary to you. Different people have scary, different scary tasks. Um, for me, I tend to get stuck with any kind of paperwork involving data entry or math. Um, I learned to fear math for some unknown reason because I'm actually quite good at it when I sit down and do it, but I'm still afraid of it. Um, I am afraid of making outgoing phone calls and people who call me. That is why sometimes it takes me a while to get back to you. Email is much easier for me because I am a writer and not a talker by nature. So freezing is when you stop in place and try to become invisible. And this can work in certain situations, but again, we're thinking very short term here. It's not particularly healthy, any of these reactions. These are just what happens when our fear overcomes us. It doesn't mean it's healthy. It doesn't mean it's something we should or shouldn't do. It just is. We'll get into what we can do differently in the next video that covers the four Fs, which will not be today. Okay, the final one, Fawn. It has the potential of being very, very useful in a lot of settings. You will see fawn used a lot in social settings by people who have particularly good fear response, but it's got a significant downside too. So I'm basically saying, good kitty, I'm too valuable to eat. I will be what you need me to be. I will lose myself. In other words, I'm going to be paying attention to other people's needs. Oops, I don't want to do that one. I will be paying, I will have poor boundaries with other people because if they ask me to do something, my fear reaction will say, oh, I've got to do that thing because if I don't, the tiger will eat me, right? Well, no, the tiger won't eat you, but you have a tiger in your past that might have, so you are going to be kind of cautious. 
Now, you're going to have a significant risk of being found by and taken advantage of by an abuser. And I phrased it that way for a very specific reason that I will get into one of these videos, but not today. Um, it comes down to it is not your fault if you are abused, and I will get into the psychological dynamics of that at another time. Um, you ignore your own pain, you ignore your own needs, your own wants, your own feels. You, you never feel good enough to not be afraid. Um, you solve the other people's problems all the time. Now, I'm not going to get really, really deep into what you do with these today because I just frankly don't have enough time. Um, what I am going to do is talk real quickly about what happens when you've got mismatched um, sets of fear responses. Now, remember, these are fear responses that are the tiger is in the room. Unfortunately, for most people with anxiety disorders, the tiger is always or usually or frequently in the room. That is how anxiety disorders work. They work by making you think that the tiger is there all the time and you always have to defend yourself. Um, it's very, very thoughtful of PTSD to do that for you, but it's not actually that helpful. It's kind of like when a three-year-old offers to clean the house for you. You're probably going to have to do it yourself later. Um, anyway, I am, my primary go-to is fight. Um, like I said, that has a couple significant downfalls, not least of which is that I have the potential of being a bully myself. I am very aware of this. I watch myself for it. I sometimes fail. If you pay attention to me on the internet, you will see that I sometimes fail. That is my fear response, and I try to be mindful of it, and I am not always successful, but because I am somebody who encourages people to study their processes, I do not delete the things that I have left up and that have caused harm because I want people to see my mistakes as well as my successes. Um, my second go-to is freeze. That is the second most common thing I do. Whoops, I don't know how that happened. Anyway, my second most common is freeze. I don't, uh, I have a tendency um, when I can't fight for whatever reason, I will freeze. I will stop working. Um, I also disassociate stuff that so, sometimes that's part of my PTSD as well. Um, I used to be a fawner, but I was the victim of a true sadist at one point of my life. And that cured me of being a fawner because there is nothing you can do that'll be enough for a true sadist to stop hurting you because that sadist's urge is to hurt you. Whereas most common abusers their urge is to ease their own pain and their own fear, which is why so many uh, abusers are fighters. But let's say, like in my family, living in my home right now, I'm a fight-freeze person. My husband is, mm, he goes kind of between fawn and flight or fawn and freeze. He's not much of a fighter. Um, my oldest son is pretty definitely a freeze fawn person, occasionally flight, but again, not much of a fighter. So, uh, guess who does most of the yelling in my house? It's, I'll give you three guesses and it's not my son and it's not my husband. Um, so there's a mismatch there. Uh, a, a little example, and I'm not going to go into a lot of details, but I was expecting something important in the mail last week. Um... And I had had a really rough day. I had a lot of vulnerabilities. And vulnerabilities are important to fear because the more vulnerability you are, the more likely you are to feel deeper, higher, scarier fear. Fear. And I had a lot of vulnerabilities that day. I'd had a doctor's appointment. And that doctor's appointment was one at which I had a fasting blood test. And I hadn't slept well the night before. And it was a new doctor. So, you know, I don't like new people anyway. And I'm not fond of going to the doctor. So those are two things. I was hungry. I was sleepy. I got stuck in order to get a um, blood test. And I got stuck again in order to get a very, very overdue flu shot. People vaccinate. Please, please, please. Anyway, so 
I was feeling a lot of things and I was also really excited because the thing I'm getting was a brand new toy that I'd been looking forward for for a long time. And it was something that was pretty expensive and that if I wasn't able to get it, I wouldn't be able to replace it. Does that make sense? Okay, so I get home from my doctor's appointment and my husband's disabled and my son works evenings, so they were both home. And there was a package on my front step. Actually, there were two. They were both from Amazon. Yay, Amazon, boo, Amazon, both. Anyway, uh, there were two packages. One was obviously too small to be the thing that I wanted, and the other was possibly too large, but might have been the right thing. But you see, I order, I order uh, some staples every month on Amazon because they're cheaper and because I have to watch my budget because I'm a therapist and therapists don't make money. Um... So anyway, I get up there and I take a look and it's pretty clear that the biggest box is my dog food that, you know, Lady Day is going to be very happy to get, but isn't my toy, right? And the other box is a little dry erase board that I have bought for these videos that you'll be seeing shortly. Um, not today. So I'm still kind of excited, but I'm also disappointed because my toy hasn't come yet. And so... I go back inside and I look at my husband and I say, oh, darling, is my toy inside? And he looks at me and he says, no, it's out on the front porch. I signed for it. And I don't know how much you know about Amazon, but I'll tell you this. If you f sign for something and you didn't actually get it, you have no way of proving you didn't get it. So if my so husband signed for my toy and didn't actually get it, I was out that money and I was out that toy and I was out on my butt and I was furious. I was beyond furious and I was also terrified because this toy isn't just a toy, it's also kind of a tool and it would have been a real big deal to, uh, to not have it. So, I blew up. Boy, did I blew up. I lost my temper. I stomped around the house. And even doing this, I was still trying to use my coping skills. So I was running to the kitchen to try to get something to eat as I was stopping around the house and explaining to my husband why he had wrecked my life. And I was, I was, I was just not okay. Okay, guys, because, you know, we're, we're talking somebody who's hungry, who's tired, who's had a really long morning, who has nine appointments right after this and has to be at work in 20 minutes, who suddenly thinks that something very expensive is not going to be delivered and they're going to be out both the money and the thing. So, uh... Short, long story short, uh, my husband had signed for the dog food and for the dry erase board, and the other thing did come in the mail later that day, and I have played with it, and it is wonderful. Um, and if you're watching this, Rick, um, thank you for the computer, but I have replaced it, and that one is going to be my backup computer now. Anyway, <laughs> but anyway, my son is a fawn freeze or freeze fawn um when he's in a good place he's fawning first and the rest of the time he's freeze so he comes out and he hears me yelling and <laughs> he looks at me and he goes so what's the problem and i'm still trying to calm myself down i'm still trying to use my coping skills and those of you who have used dbt before know that i would be marking my diary card on that right now if i had my diary card out and that i tried to use my coping skills skills but they didn't work very well right so I was trying to use my coping skills and they didn't work really well so my son bless his heart he's trying to calm me down he almost succeeds but my husband jumps in and tries to defend himself and I love my husband but he shouldn't have done this and I don't really blame him because sometimes he doesn't understand things since his head injury so I'm not really mad at him I'm just really really frustrated with him and scared half to death right so I blow up again, and my son just takes one look at me and says, I'm leaving. And he goes downstairs and goes and hides in the basement, which is, he's got a little pad down there, which is fine. So after work, you know, I get myself settled down by the time I get to work. I look it up on Amazon, and sure enough, and I couldn't do it at home because my computer was already packed up. Um, but I look it up, and sure enough, my new computer, which is wonderful and awesome and literally irreplaceable right now, um, is on its way, and it'll be there by 8 o'clock that night. 
So I'm like, okay, I'm calm down. I text my husband, but as I, as I go to text him, he's already texted me to apologize and we're all good. But my son, mm, he wasn't all good. I knew that. So I had to pick up my prescriptions that night when I got off work after I think nine appointments. It was a crazy, crazy week last week. I saw a lot of people. And um, at the CVS where I went, I picked up some truffles some chocolate truffles because chocolate truffles are amazing and yummy and my son and I are both chocoholics. So I bought him some chocolate truffles. I waited until he came home from work and I did what I call a repair. I handed him the chocolates. I told him I was sorry and I said, sweetheart, the bottom line is when I'm anxious, I am going to explode. When you're anxious, you're going to either try to appease me or hide. And I'm really, really sorry that we come at each other this way. And I'm always going to try to let you know afterwards that I wasn't mad at you and you aren't in danger. Because that's all I can do. Because I can't control my anxiety 100%. Now, I've probably taken 10 minutes to tell you about this. The entire episode took less than six or seven. I was really in a hurry to get to work. So I only exploded for a very short time, but it was enough and it caused problems. This is an example of how having different fear reactions um, with the different of the four F's can cause problems for you. In any case, thank you for tuning in. I hope you liked my little story. I will have the video up the first day, the second day, you will be able to find the audio up on Patreon. Um, two days after that, you should be able to find the article on oomm.live. And um, then I will, each will release from patron only status three days after it is published. My Patreon, of course, is, G <laughs> yeah, sorry, patreon.com backslash J-L-I-L-E-S. And you can hear the nervousness in my voice because talking about fear was a little frightening for me. So tune in next time and I'll have a different topic that talks about something that affects your life and your mental health symptoms that you can make small changes about. I might go back to the fear thing. I have a couple of other things in mind too. And I might just go to how to apologize since this is a good lead in. So we'll go to that next time and I'll talk to you later. Thank you. Hi guys, this is Jenny Lyles. Thank you for watching my video. I'd like to talk to you for a moment about my best friend, Kathy Malone. Kathy has a heart condition that she contracted from a virus when she was in her 20s. She's 17 years past her expiration date. And Kathy will die if she doesn't get a heart transplant and it needs to happen within the next year or two. Unfortunately, she has been told by the hospital where she will be getting the transplant that she needs to come up with a minimum of $20,000 in order to prove that she can pay for her anti-rejection meds over the first 18 months after her transplant or they won't put her on the list. I'm trying to save my best friend's life. If you would like to help me with that, please go to forkathysheart.responsivellc.com and click on the links on the right hand side if you're on a desktop or towards the bottom if you are on a mobile phone and please donate to her GoFundMe or to her PayPal so that my best friend's life can be saved. Thank you. I will talk to you later and don't forget again to go to oomm.live or patreon.com backslash j-l-i-l-e-s if you like my work and you'd like to support it. Thank you.